originates live with the NBC Television Network. NBC Sports presents the 1965 World Series. From Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles, California, the Minnesota Twins meeting the Los Angeles Dodgers. Well, hi, everybody. This is Ben Scully, along with Ray Scott, ready to bring you the fifth game of this 1965 World Series. The Gillette Safety Razor Company and Chrysler Corporation also bring you the all-star baseball game, NCAA football, and the 1966 Rose Bowl game over the NBC network in appreciation of your continued support. The fifth game of the World Series, and after four, it's as if it is now the best two out of three instead of the best four out of seven. And two better left-handers you're not going to find on the scene, Jim Cott, an 18-game winner from Minnesota, and the first left-hander in almost 30 years to win 26 games in the National League, Sandy Koufax. Koufax, of course, lost to Cott the first time around. We'll see about the second time. To fill you in on the Minnesota aspect of this fifth game, the voice of the Twins, here's Ray Scott. Thank you very much, Vince Scully, and hi again, everybody. If indeed the World Series is going to evolve itself into where you're playing, since the Twins, of course, won the two games played in their home ballpark, Metropolitan Stadium, and the Dodgers have won the two played here in Dodger Stadium, then, of course, the Twins feel they'll have the ultimate edge because this is the year that the American League team will have four games in its home ballpark and the National League team three if indeed the series goes to seven. I do believe that the twin players have been a bit uh, upset at their play in yesterday's game and how it will affect today's game remains to be seen. But as Vin said, two great pitchers are matched today, Koufax and Cott. Vin, let's go back to you. Some of the members of the bullpen contingent for the Minnesota Twins. And they had their first real airing yesterday when Alan Worthington and Bill Pleiss came in to relieve. And the day before when Jimmy Merritt and Johnny Klipstein came in. The Twins in the first two games had complete games from Jim Grant and Jim Cott. Talking about Jim Cott, there's the talented left-hander right now, loosening up in front of the Minnesota dugout. Jim, an 18-game winner, 18 and 11, pitched a strong game to beat Sandy Koufax 5-1 to one in the second game of the series. And there is the same Koufax who went six innings against the Twins, allowed two runs, only one of them earned. Sandy in World Series competition is two and two, and both of his defeats, he allowed only one earned run. He lost to the Chicago White Sox one to nothing, and then, of course, the final score of the game with Minnesota, five to one. The pregame meeting at home plate and the exchange of batting cards, and we'll take a look at the names on the Dodger card right now. Leading off, the shortstop, Maury Wills. Jim Gilliam at third base. Willie Davis hitting third in center field. Lou Johnson in the cleanup spot against left-handers in left field. Ron Fairley in right field. Wes Parker will be at first base. Dick Trususki playing for the injured Jim Lefevre at second. Johnny Roseborough going all the way behind the plate in the series and Sandy Koufax, the pitcher. The fifth game of the 1965 World Series is being brought to you from Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles, California. The umpires have taken their respective positions, so we're very close to game time. So without further ado, here's the voice of the Minnesota Twins, Ray Scott. Thanks again, Ben. The umpiring assignments today at the home plate Bob Stewart of the American League, the National League's Ed Fargo at first, Ed Hurley of the American League at second, Tony Venson of the National League is at third. On the foul lines and left, John Flaherty of the American League, and from the National League, Ed Sudall along the right field line. Now the starting lineup before this, again, packed house at Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles, and incidentally, the weatherman has been most kind today. Brilliant sunshine. Much warmer day than we have had the last two days here in Los Angeles. And let's take a look at the Twins. The shortstop leading off, Zoilo Versailles. The center fielder, Joe Nosick. 
Batting third, the right fielder, Tony Oliva. Harmon Killebrew again in the cleanup spot, the Twins' third baseman. Earl Batty will catch today and bat in the number five spot. The left fielder, Bob Allison, bats six. First baseman, Don Mincher, in the seventh spot. The second baseman, Frank Phyllisy, bats number eight. And left-hander, Jim Cott, regular season record, 18 wins, 11 losses. A winner in the second game of the World Series over Koufax as the Twins won that one five to one. So on this perfect afternoon, the fifth game of the World Series will be played. Young Craig Swan is being introduced. And the crowd being told of his pitching exploits, which included a no-hitter. And so he and Sandy Koufax have something in common. Koufax has completed his warm-up chores. Jim Cott is still throwing up. Craig Swan. Pitcher for the Pony League champions from Long Beach, California. <laughs> Who shook? We pause briefly for station identification. If you play center field at Dodger Stadium and the ball comes off the bat, you must find it somewhere in that background. It presents quite a chore. Joe Nosick, who is playing in center field today for the Twins, remarked before the start of the first game here at Dodger Stadium of the World Series, the third game of the series, that he was hoping the sun would not come out because uh, he felt that with the haze, uh, an outfielder had a chance. Some sort of a background would be provided. But today, the weatherman has dictated that we will have brilliant sunshine. This 1965 World Series game is being brought to you live and in color exclusively on NBC. A look now at the Dodgers in the field. At first base, Wes Parker. Dick Trzewski at second. Mari Wills at short. Jim Gilliam at third. Lou Johnson is the left fielder. Willie Davis in center. Ron Fairley in right. John Roseboro, the catcher. And on the mound, Sandy Koufax. Twin coaches, Jim Lemon getting in position at first. And Billy Martin is at third. Then, I wonder if I could ask you a question here as the Twins Versailles comes to the plate. I, I don't believe that, uh, or I believe that there are many of our fans who are not really aware of the condition of Sandy's arm as far as what he must do to get ready to pitch a game. Well, Ray, in essence, it is referred to as a traumatic arthritic condition. And although he warms up the usual time 20 minutes, it sometimes will take him four innings to get ready. And he said that in Minnesota on that kind of wet gray day, he really didn't feel right until the sixth inning. One of the standout players in this World Series, Zoilo Versailles, starts it off along with his counterpart at shortstop for the Dodgers, Mari Wills. Versailles has six base hits in the series and 17 at bats. So he and Wills leading in that particular department. Gilliam tied at third and the first pitch of the fifth game. An attempted bunt is fouled back for strike one. When Versailles faced Koufax, in the second game of the series. He was 0 for 3 against Koufax, but he did triple in the seventh inning against Peronoski. A ball, one and one. I asked Sandy about the second time around. This is what he said. 
Well, the second time that you face the ball club, uh, you do have uh, an idea of what kind of hitters they are, a little bit better than you do the first time. Of course, they have uh, an idea of what kind of pitcher you are. You just hope that uh, you have your good stuff and your good control. Two and two to Versailles. Getting a look at the Koufax fastball. Versailles has homered, tripled, doubled, and has three singles. To short, to first, one away. The twin center fielder, Joe Nassig, platooning in center with Jimmy Hall in manager Sam Mealy's scheme of things for World Series play. Joe in the series has shown himself to be a fine outfielder and at the plate has three hits and eight at bats. Curve for a strike. Nasik against Kopax singled, flied out, and sacrificed in the second game of the series. Low one and one. Strike one and two. Deep into the hole. The Wills off balance throw in time. Oh, there is a strong arm. Wills throwing off balance to get the speedy Nasik. And with two down, here is Tony Oliva. Oliva, three hits, 16 at bats in the series, including a home run yesterday. Kofax. Out. The Twins are retired. One, two, three. And so at the end of the first half inning, the score is the Twins nothing, and the Dodgers coming to bat. The Twins defensively. At first base, Don Mincher. Second base, Frank Quillacy. The shortstop, Zoilo Versailles. The third baseman, Harmon Killebrew. Bob Allison is in left. Joe Nasik in center. Tony Oliva in right. Earl Batty is the catcher. And Jim Cott is on the mound. First base coach is Danny Ozark for the Dodgers. And a third, Preston Gomez. Last of the first and no score. Strike one. Wills, six for 17 and two runs batted in. Jim Cott makes one too good, and Morley drives the ball down the right field line. It bounces into the stands for a ground rule double. Gilliam, reactivated this spring by the Dodgers after being a coach, is the next hitter. This is just about the maximum Dodger threat. Wills on second, nobody out, and Gilliam up. Ball one. The Dodgers did not get a hit off Cott until the fifth inning of the second game of the series. Picks on a pitch from Jim Cott and smashes the ball into right field for a single. Will slides into the plate with the first Dodger run. Here's what Jim Cott had to say about the way he intended to pitch against the Dodgers today. Regardless of the size of the stadium, I'm going to try to pitch the same type of ball game I did in Met Stadium last week. Uh, over the first four games, the pitchers who have had the most success are those who have thrown strikes 
and stayed ahead of the hitters, and this will be my plan today. And so the Dodgers take a one nothing lead. Gilliam has his first RBI of the season, and here is Willie Davis. Four hits, 16 at bats in the series. Killebrew and the ball beyond Phyllisy. Gilliam is around third. Davis at third. It is two to nothing. It is a sacrifice and an error charged to the second baseman, Phyllisy. So the Dodgers have a two to nothing lead. On third base is Willie Davis. Still nobody out. And here is the left fielder, Lou Johnson. Willisley, the second baseman, calling. One out. And now Ron Fairley. His single yesterday knocked in two runs and moved the Dodgers from a three to two lead to a five to two lead in the series five hits 16 at bats and four runs batted in Earl Batty is conferring with Scott two nothing the Dodgers lead in the first inning Willie Davis at third and one away the infield remains at the edge of the grass on the left side back about one step off the infield grass on the right side. Tony Oliva has a great arm. Davis has great speed. And he's held at third. Two down. Davis made only the token move to the plate. And with two down, the first baseman, Wes Parker, Five for 11 in the series, including a homer. Caught. Out at first, and the Dodgers are retired, but score twice. And so at the end of the first inning, the score is the Dodgers two, the Twins nothing. Next Saturday, NBC will telecast one of the top college football games of the year when Texas meets Arkansas. At 4 Eastern Time, 3 Central Time, live and in color, exclusively on NBC. And remember, before each college football game, the Bud Wilkinson NCAA preview show. Sandy Koufax, presented with a 2-0 lead after one inning, will face Harmon Killebrew, Earl Batty, and Bob Allison in the Twins' second inning. Killebrew has four hits and 11 at bats, including a home run yesterday. High ball one. Strike one and one. One and two. Got to look at the fastball that time. Strike out. One down in the Twins' second inning. And here is Earl Batty. Koufax in six innings in the second game of the series struck out nine, walked one, and allowed six hits. In the right, Ron Fairley. Two down. The left fielder, Bob Allison, comes to the plate. Contributed one of the outstanding defensive plays in at least recent World Series history. And it came in the second game of the series. And it's generally believed that catch turned the whole game around. Ball one high. Ball two. Two and all. Oh. Two and one. Two and two. Chasing a high fastball. (laughs) 
second strikeout for Colfax. Six twins in a row have been retired. At the end of an inning and a half, the score, the Dodgers two, the twins nothing. In the midst of our World Series game, we'd like to pass along our good wishes to all those in Canada who are today celebrating Thanksgiving. Lefty Jim Cott, with his team trailing two to nothing in the last of the second, faces the bottom third of the order. Trzuski, Roseboro, and Koufax. Ball one. Trzuski, the Dodgers' second baseman, hitless in six at bats. He replaced Jim Lefevre, who came up with a severely bruised foot and has been unable to play since. I beg your pardon, I said 0 for 6. Trzuski's 0 for 7. Versailles with a great play in the hole and just missed getting his man by an eyelash. The twin shortstop. Here's a look at that play again. First base umpire Ed Bargo with a safe sign and Trzuski is no longer hitless. The third hit off Cott, and here's Roseboro. Strike one. Roseboro, four hits, 14 at bats, three runs batted in. If a ball should be hit back to Cott, notice how he'll make his throw to second. I did not think in terms of a line drive. But there you can see the play at second on the replay on the throw to Versailles. So runners first and second and nobody out. What I was referring to is the fact that despite Jim Cott being an excellent fielder, one of the very best among the pitchers, he has had trouble in making his throw to second base. And as a result, Jim over and again has said, that after having this difficulty, he decided he would take his time and concentrate on getting just the head man instead of worrying about the double play. But that's down the drain now because they're runners at first and second, no outs, and here's Kopax. Almost thrown away. Versailles making a great save. An infield single and a fielder's choice and runners at first and second. Strike. Batty could not quite get to it. Strike out. One away. And to the plate comes Mari Will. Seven hits. 18 at bats. Doubled in the first inning and scored on Gilliam's follow-up single. It was the second double for Wills in the series. Runner to third and he is out. Krasuski out. Roseboro in at second. Watch the runner now on the instant replay. Trzuski. Third base umpire, Tony Benson, makes the call. So two down. The first pitch taken for ball one by Wills. Quillacy to Mincher. Cott pitches out of trouble and the Dodgers are out. And so, at the end of the second inning, the score, the Dodgers two, the Twins nothing. Bob Hope, Roger Miller, and Mary Tyler Moore join Andy Williams tonight at 10, 9 Central Time on the Andy Williams Show, immediately following Dr. Kildare in color here on NBC. In the Twins third, Don Mincher, 
Frank Quillacy and Jim Cott to face Sandy Koufax as the Dodgers lead by two to nothing. Koufax has struck out two. The Twins uh, have not been able to come up with a base runner. Shallow right field, Willie Davis coming in, and the center fielder will make the catch in right center. Seven in a row retired by Koufax, and here is Quillacy. At the same stage of the game, when Koufax worked the second game of the series, Quillacy became the Twins' first base runner by walking. In the series, the Twins' second baseman has had two hits in 12 trips. But no hits since the first game. Strike. Outside, one and one. A let up delivery, strike call. Strikeout number three. And with two down in the third, here is Jim Cott. Koufax struck out Cott twice. Later on in that game, Cott singled and knocked in two runs. But Koufax had departed. Cott likes to bunt for a base hit. Strike two. Foul back on the bunt attempt. Another strikeout. Nine in a row retired by Koufax. So at the end of two and a half innings, the score is the Dodgers two and the Twins nothing. Jim Gilliam had some thoughts about the way Jim Cott would pitch to him today. Here's what he said. Well, the series is all even now, and uh, it's been pretty rough on me up to that plate right now. This Cott uh, pitched me pretty good the last time I faced him, but I hope to have better success with him this time. Killebrew to Mincher. If it is true that a pitcher thrives on trouble, then Cott's one of the thrivingest pitchers in a long while. He's had nothing but trouble today. Pitched out of a big trouble spot in the first inning and another jam in the second. Here's Willie Davis. Willie up to sacrifice in the first inning wound up on third base when Killebrew's throw on his sacrifice attempt got away from Frank Willisy. There's a base hit to right. And for Davis, his fifth hit in the series. Hit number four off Cott. Here's Lou Johnson. Popped up to the second baseman in the first inning. Runner going. Throw very high. Safe. Want to watch it again? third run batted in as he belted the off speed pitch into straightaway center. So the Dodgers have a three to nothing lead and with one out and Johnson on first here's Ron Fairley. Runner going. They sit. Johnson a third being waved in. Headed for the dugout. And manager Sam Mealy is headed for the mound. Fairley has taken over the lead in the World Series and runs batted in. That's his fifth. 
Dave Boswell, 20 years old, takes over from lefty Jim Cott. So Cott, a winner, the first time against the Dodgers, is knocked out after two and a third innings and is hit hard. Cott gave up six hits, struck out one, didn't walk anybody. Boswell comes on with a Dodger runner at second, fairly. Two runs in in the third inning and one out. Dementia, unassisted and fairly moves to third. Two down. The second baseman, Dick Krzyzewski, comes to the plate. An infield hit in the second inning. Ball four. So with Dodger runners at first and third, here's John Roseboro. Strikeout. The safe call made at third. Third out. But it didn't make any difference. That would have been the fourth out if they'd have nailed him. So at the end of the third inning, the score is the Dodgers four. The Twins nothing. We pause for station identification. This is the CBC Television Network. A packed house and a beautiful day in Los Angeles as the hometown favorite Dodgers, down two games to none in the World Series, have not only battled back to a 2-2 tie, but the Dodgers have presented Koufax with a 4-0 lead after three innings. Koufax has struck out four. Twins have yet to get a man on, and here in the fourth inning, it'll be Versailles, Nasik, and Oliva. Shallow right, Ron Fairley. Shielding his eyes from the glare, and that's ten in a row, retired by Koufax. To short, to first, two down. And now, Tony Oliva tried to bunt his way on in the first inning and was thrown out by Koufax. Tony's the first American leaguer to win consecutive batting championships since Ted Williams. Strike one. Strike. Fouled away. Foul. Check to swing in time. Ball one. Strike three. Twelve in a row. Set down by Koufax. So, at the end of three and a half innings, the score is the Dodgers four. And the Twins nothing. There's a man appreciating what Sandy Koufax is doing, and his name is Drysdale. Yesterday, Koufax was the fan, and Drysdale was the pitcher with the outstanding performance. And here is Koufax, the batter. As a batsman in the second inning, struck out. Strike three. Colfax just sort of nodded his head as if to say, a very fine pitch, young man. Here's Mari Wills. Doubled in the first and scored the first run of the game. Grounded out second to first in the second. The Dodgers have a four to nothing lead, seeking a sweep here in Dodger Stadium. Versailles, safe. Eight hits for Wills in the series. 
Want to see it again? Close to safe. Wills has stolen two bases in the series. With one away, the batter is Gilliam. Batting from the right side against Cott, singled and grounded out. His single knocked in a run, and you can hear the crowd chanting to Will. They want to see him go. I'll say this, Boswell has been high with every throw to first. It's about ball six going to first base. One out. And Gilliam still hasn't had a chance to see Boswell's delivery. And the runner goes. Ball into center field. Watch it again. A good throw, except that it was high. Had the ball been held, it would have been close. A Dodger Club record for steals in a World Series has just been set. Seven in seven games in 1947. And a man to the name of Pee Wee Reese has just been tied. It is five to nothing. <laughs> Gilliam's second RBI of the day. Here's Willie Davis. Out at second, no chance for the relay. Two down. Here's Lou Johnson. Popped up in the first, knocked in a run in the third. There goes the runner, and what a jump. Willie Davis crawling the last 20 feet. had a late throw been made, they might have gotten him. See what you think. See him fall? I'm trying to figure out, Ben, what stroke he used there. Davis's second stolen base of the game. One and one to Johnson. Fumble, but in time. The Dodgers are out. Score one, leave one on. And so at the end of four innings, the score, the Dodgers five. The Twins nothing. Facts before today's game. Well, I really was impressed with Sandy's curveball when he pitched in Minnesota. He's got probably one of the greatest uh, curveballs that I've ever seen from a left-hand pitcher. And, of course, he's got that real good fastball to go along with the good curve. Recall Killebrew in his pregame discussion said he was impressed with the curve. Shallow center and Davis lost it. But he got it and then dropped it. He lost the ball in the sun. It was obvious that Davis had lost that ball. He hesitated and to the best of my knowledge, he got the ball in his glove, but he couldn't hold on to it. It is ruled a base hit, and the crowd here reacts to that decision. And there is the first twin hit. A pop fly single to center. A ball that Willie Davis just plain lost. 
The batter is Earl Batty, flight out to right in the second inning. Base runner number one for the Twins. Mari Wills, out, out. Just like that, two are out. And here's Allison, struck out in the second. An attempted bunt, foul for strike one. Foul, strike two. Low for a ball, one and two. In the dirt again, two and two. Six strikeouts. The Twins get a base hit, but leave none on. And so at the middle of the fifth inning, the score is the Dodgers five and the Twins nothing. The second half of today's World Series game is brought to you by Chrysler Corporation. We move to the last of the fifth inning and here to take you along the rest of the way, the voice of the Dodgers, Vin Scully. And you know, Vin, and I, I don't know whether it's old hat to you or not watching yet another masterpiece by Sandy Koufax, but as one who doesn't get a chance to see him very often, uh, I just can't say enough about this game he's pitching. Thank you, Ray, and hi, everybody. Strike one to Fairley. Fairley has flied to right and doubled one for two. Line to center, Nosek in a hurry, but it's a base hit. So Ron Fairley has come alive. He's two for three today. Fairley had one hit yesterday and a double the day before. Nine hits for the Dodgers. Parker looking for his first, and Roseboro and Koufax. The other six men in the lineup have at least one apiece. Fairley goes, hit and run, and a fly ball to left field and deep. Allison goes back, makes the catch, and Fairley hustles back to first base. So playing hit and run, but Parker went the other way, fly deep to left. Give you an idea, that's very close to being a home run in Minnesota. Here's Krasuski, infield single and walk. Versailles making a great play to even get the ball in the second inning. Fairly goes, and a drive to left. Allison goes back, turns, makes the major leaguers catch. And Fairly back to first, and he has to hurry. Boy, Bob Allison made a fine play. That perhaps was not as eye-catching and dramatic as the sliding catch in Minnesota, but believe me, that's a major league play. On a day like today particularly, Allison had to take his eye off the ball, go about 15 to 20 feet, turn and find it. And sometimes to find it here, you have to put an ad in the paper. <laughs> that was quite a play. Ball four, so they get Koufax to the plate. Sandy will get an ovation. He owns this town. Not only Los Angeles, Sandy's the only pitcher I've ever seen who gets an ovation in every park in the National League when he comes out of the dugout to warm up. It's somewhat like the maestro ascending the podium. There they go. Strike three call. No runs are hit, the Dodgers leave two, and at the end of five innings of play, the score, the Dodgers five, the Twins nothing. Sandy Koufax has allowed one hit and has still faced the minimum of 15 batters in five innings. The hit a fly ball that should have been caught. Willie Davis had no jump, lost the ball, as Ray pointed out, charged, and actually had it in his glove until he hit the ground, and then it squirted out. That's the only hit, and the only man to get aboard. Don Mincher, Frank Quillacy, and Boswell Spot in the sixth. Mincher flied to center in the third. Breaking ball for a strike, 0-1. Missed one and one. Today, from the very outset, he's shown a good fastball and a good curve. 
He has not thrown any off speed, no fork balls. He stayed right with the fastball and curve. There's the off speed. First time he's thrown it. Ball two. You think back of his accomplishments, it's incredible that so many honors should come to one man as have come to Sandy Koufax. Four no hitters, including a perfect game. Most strikeouts in one game in a World Series, 15. Most strikeouts in a series, 23. 18 strikeouts in a regular game. Foul tip, strike two. And today, he might have had another, except for the fly ball that was lost. Just missed with the fastball. Three and two. Sandy's a boy who was never really interested in baseball. Down goes Minty. And that's seven for him. When Koufax went to the University of Cincinnati in his freshman year, he planned to be an architect. And he had no idea about going out for baseball, except as we understand that the baseball team was going to make a rather attractive road trip during the Easter holidays to Florida. And so Sandy decided he'd go out for the club so he could make the trip. He's made a lot of trips since then. Pop fly to Suski. Two out and Rich Rollins coming up. Rollins making his second appearance in the series as a pinch hitter. He batted for Camilo Pasquale in the sixth inning of the third game and hit back to the box to Osteen. Bounced one. One ball and no strikes. The night that Sandy Koufax pitched the perfect game against the Chicago Cubs here at Dodger Stadium. The last inning, he threw harder than any human being I have ever seen throw a baseball, including Koufax. High fly ball to deep left. Johnson back on the track. It's playable. He's got it. So they're out in order in the sixth, and the score at the end of five and a half innings of play, Dodgers five, Twins nothing. Jim Perry making his first World Series appearance. He won 12 and lost seven in the regular season with a fine ERA of 2.6. He started 19, completed four. And is dropped in in relief today. The Dodgers will have Maury Wills, Jim Gilliam, and Willie Davis. Wills is two for three, and he has eight hits in the series. So he's top dog with the bat. Hit into right center. In a hurry is Oliva and Nosek. It drops in, and Maury's going to keep on going. He's in there. He tried to pull, hit a fly ball to shallow center, and Versailles goes out, makes the catch. One away, and here is Willie Davis. Down he goes. Lou Johnson had some feelings about the World Series. Here's what he said just before the start of today's game. Well, we're down to the fifth game, and uh, well, I'm uh, a little more tense today than I think it was when it was the first game because uh, the first game I know we took four games to win it, and now it's down to where we have to take uh, two games to win it. So. Uh, you know, uh, at the, today's game, we got a great advantage on him because we got one of the greatest pitchers in baseball going for us. 
Sandy Colfax. Fly ball to right field. Oliva over. Sunglasses glistening. That'll do it. No runs ahead, a man left. And the score at the end of six, Dodgers five. Twins nothing. We pause now for station identification. This is the CBC Television Network. As we go to the seventh inning, five to nothing Dodgers. The Dodgers make a change. John Kennedy takes over at third base. John and Minnesota figure prominently. Kennedy made his major league debut against the Minnesota Twins. Came up to bat while Dick Stigman was pitching a no hitter. And in his first at bat, Homer to break up the no hitter. Later on, Washington tied the score. Stigman wound up not having anything to do with it. For the Twins in the seventh inning, Zoil Versailles, Joe Nosick, and Tony Oliva. Strike. 0 oh 1. Curveball high. 1 and 1. Fastball 1 and 2. Colfax has been blessed with many physical pluses. He has extremely long fingers, which help to give him a great deal of rotation on the ball. Tremendous muscular development in the back. The minus, of course, the traumatic arthritic condition of the left elbow. He will soak that elbow a good 45 minutes in ice after every game. Curveball. That is strikeout number eight. Colfax won 26 in the league. Hit to the hole. Backhanded by Wills. The throw. Not in time. Maury could not get anything on the throw. And Nosick, exceptionally fine runner, legged it out. Infield single. Wills could not set himself to throw. Watch. He has to throw almost on the run. And it was a high throw. Nosek just did beat it on a bang-bang play. That is hit number two. In a sense, it takes the stigma off the other base hit in the fifth. And here is Tony Oliva. Ball one. Colfax, only the third left-hander in National League history ever to win 26 games. The other two left-handers, Giants, Rube Marquard and Carl Hubble. Hubble last did it in 36, and then Colfax this year. Ball two. In there. Very high, and Sandy's angry at himself. That's the first time he has, let's say, dropped the poker face. He immediately... Assumes it again. In there. Got him. And the bat will roll and all the way out towards Krasuski. That is the ninth strikeout for Sandy Koufax. Driven into the left field corner and Johnson is there to glove it. No run. The hit, a man left. And the score at the end of six and a half innings of play, the Dodgers five, the Twins nothing. Five nothing Dodgers, bottom of the seventh. Fairly Parker and Trususki against Jim Perry. Hit to the hole. Backhanded by Versailles. No play this time. He's all over the place. Boy, he's a fine ball player. Mm. Zoilo Versailles. Base hit for Fairley. Now let's find out what Wes Parker is thinking about or was thinking about before the start of this game. I think the twin pitchers have been experimenting with me pretty much as far as pitching is concerned. They've been moving the ball around some, uh, like Grant have pitched me outside, and then he's moved the ball inside. But uh, the fellow that's pitching today, Cott, I believe he'll try and throw me fastballs away and then perhaps come in with sliders and curveballs. The bunt. Perry down to pick it up. 
So the sacrifice works. Fairly moves up 90 feet. And the battle will be Dick Krasuski. Breaking ball. Slider strike three. So two fast balls and a slider and down goes Krasuski. Second strikeout for Jim Perry. Johnny Klipstein, the right-hander, loosening up in the Minnesota bullpen. And Dick Stigman, the left-hander. Here's Johnny Roseboro. Sacrifice, struck out, and walk. And with the pitcher to follow, they will walk Roseboro and take their chances on Sandy, who has struck out three times today. So Roseboro to first. Fairly at second, and an ovation building up for Sandy Colfax. Colfax struck out three times today. Five nothing Dodgers, two out, seventh inning. When Sandy first came up to the Dodgers, he never hit the ball at all. Then it got so where he'd hit an occasional foul. Now he's getting a base hit. In comes Fairley. It's six to nothing Dodgers. Getting an ovation and a standing ovation from everyone along the right field line. The Dodgers with at least one hit in every inning and have now scored in the seventh to score at least one run against every pitcher. Four against Pott, one against Boswell, and this one against Perry. Wills has two doubles and a single in four trips. Base hit. Roseboro is coming home. And the ball is kicked by Nosik. So the run is over. Kofax held at second. It is seven to nothing Dodgers. Wills is next for Perry and hits through the middle. Joe Nosik juggles the ball. But it is no factor as Roseboro scores easily. And the Dodgers pull away seven to nothing. Two runs and four hits charged to Perry. Seven runs, 13 hits for the Dodgers. And here is John Kennedy. Fly ball to shallow left. Allison started the wrong way, but the big man comes and one hands it in fair ground. Bob started to go back and came in. The Dodgers settle for two runs. Three hits and leave two, and at the end of seven, the score, the Dodgers seven, the Twins nothing. As we go to the eighth inning, the Dodgers seven runs, 13 hits, and no errors. They have left nine. The Twins no runs, two hits, and one error. They have left one. Sandy Koufax in the seventh inning when he singled. That was his first World Series base hit. He'll be pitching to Earl Batty, Bob Allison, and Don Mincher. He has struck out nine without a walk and has allowed two singles to the hole at short by Joe Nosick in the seventh inning and a fly ball single to center off the glove of Willie Davis by Harmon Killebrew in the fifth. Sandy, in seven innings, has faced 22 men, just one above the minimum. Batty flied to right, grounded into a double play. Bounce it to Wills. Throws him out. Here's Bob Allison. Ball four, and that's the first pass issued by Colfax. Mincher has flied to center and struck out. Don over for two. One hopper, one-handed by Wills, backhanded it to Suski, over to Packer, double play. Oh. 
No runs, no hits, no errors. At the end of seven and a half, seven to nothing, Dodgers. In the Twins' eighth, with Allison on first and one out, Mincher hits towards short. Wills goes far to his left. Grabs the ball, and while on the dead run, flips it perfectly to Trususki at second base. Dick leaps up, and while high in the air, gets off a pivot throw to complete a fantastic double play. Bottom of the eighth, seven to nothing Dodgers. In the first game of the series, the Dodgers made a bizarre double play on a high throw to Wills, who bounced his throw to first, but take a look at this one. This is a gem. Everybody had a part in that one. One handed by Wills, the high twisting throw by Trususki, and Parker dug it out. Okay, Willie Davis, Lou Johnson, Ron Fairley, Looper into center, base hit. 14 hits for the Dodgers, at least one hit in every inning. High drive into center field, back goes Nosek, oh, way back to the wall, he's got it. And Willie Davis trots back to first. Joe Nosek, a fine outfielder, got a good jump, just went to the wall and made his play. Round of applause for Johnson as he goes back to the dugout. Lou's had himself quite a series. He came into this game hitting 350. Here's Ron Fairley. He's had quite a day. Three straight hits, he's three for four. Willie's going. The pitch swung on a miss. No chance for a throw. He had such a big jump on Jim Perry. And again, we repeat the Dodger base running philosophy. It is not a case of trying to rub it in. They're just trying to practice. Watch. High drive to straightaway center. Back goes Nosek, away back to the track and makes the catch. Tagging up is Willie. He'll go on over to third. So both Lou Johnson and Ron Fairley have sent Joe Nosek to the board for long outs. And with two down, West Parker the batter. Three and two. Strike three. The Parkers caught, no runs to hit a man left, and the score at the end of eight. Dodgers seven, twins nothing. Ninth inning, the totals through eight. Seven runs, 14 hits, and no errors. 11 left for the Dodgers. No runs, two hits, and one error. One left for the Twins. Koufax has walked one. He has struck out nine. He'll pitch to Frank Quillacy, then the pitcher's spot, and Zoilo Versailles. Hit to right field, fairly breaking to the line, but it's going to be trouble. Drops in. And Quillacy holds on, a throw back of him to Roseboro. Not in time. John almost hung him out to dry. So single to right for Frank Quillacy. That's Frank's third hit. And here is Sandy Valdespino. Line drive, base hit on a fastball up and in. Quillacy will go 90 feet and stop at second. The Twins are not going to gamble, trailing 7-0 in the ninth inning. So back-to-back -back singles for Minnesota. And the batter will be Zoilo Versailles. Curveball fouled away. Down to Billy Martin.
curveball. Good curve. And that is Sandy Koufax's 10th strikeout. Friends, this game is authorized under television rights granted by the Commissioner of Baseball solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Commissioner is prohibited. Any commercial or other use of the program, such as by charging admission for its showing, is similarly prohibited unless authorized in writing by the Commissioner. Line drive at Wills to Krasuski, double play. It's all over. Double play, six to four. In the ninth inning, no runs, two hits, one man left. And the score, the Dodgers, seven. Seven runs, 14 hits, and no errors. The Twins, no runs, four hits, and one error. Sandy Koufax, the winner. Jim Cott, the loser. The Dodgers have won three in a row. In a moment, we'll review the highlights of the game for you. In the ninth, there are two on with one out, following singles by Quillacy and Valdespino. Koufax takes a look at second, pitches, and Nosek whistles a liner to short. Will spears it and tosses to Dick Trasuski, who races over to cover second. It nips Frank Quillacy off the bag for a double play that puts a sudden end to the inning and the game. The Dodgers win seven to nothing and take a three to two lead in the series. Willie Davis tied Honus Wagner's record with three stolen bases and Wills tied another with four hits. But it was Sandy Koufax who showed the way. He fanned ten, allowed only four hits. He was simply invincible.